it's not that you have to find, you know, find a method of making the fruit grow, and you have to, because God's the, the gardener, he'll, he'll stick enough manure on your roots to make you grow properly. He'll do everything necessary for you to grow. He'll do everything necessary for that abundant life to come forth. And that gives him glory. He loves to see his children with abundant life. He loves to see them with life that is flowing over. He loves to see that. He said, I will give you life and life more abundant. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. We experience the love of the Father. We know the love of the Father when we know that abundant life. And he says, you just have that love flowing through you. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. It's all to do with relationship. It's not a great big difficult thing. It's not something terribly uh, strenuous or arduous because it's to do with relationship. If you abide in me and you keep my commandments and you abide in my love, then you'll love one another. Then it'll be easy to love one another. Amen. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. <laughs> Amen. Not only overflowing life, not only abundant life, but that your joy might be full. God's not out. God never gives us things by halves. He never just kind of gives you a little dollop. He says, I'm giving you life and life more abundant and, and that your joy might be full. Um, the Bible talks about joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy is a wonderful attribute of a Christian life. Joy is not something you have to put on and, and uh, kind of think, well, have I got the right smile on today? Is it sufficiently? Mm -hmm. No, it's something that rises up from within. It's something that's there all the time. It's something that you can't help but feel when you know what, how much God loves you and what he's given you and the joy unspeakable and full of glory. He is such a wonderful God. He never gives us anything by halves. He says, I, I want you to bear much fruit. And he, he'll, ha he'll have a way of making us do it. He'll tend us a little bit here, clip us a little bit there, cut off this dead branch here, do this little bit here. And yet, you will find that your life will be so abundant and overflowing that the fruit will be so much that it will glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. I love my God. I love what he does for us and I love how he is. That your joy might be full. And then he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. 
You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I shall not call you servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. So Jesus has saying, I'm going to change your status. I'm going to call you friends from now on because friends know what, what's going on. They know what's happening. As a servant, you, you get told, do this, do that, do the other, and you don't understand. You don't know where, why the master said those things, but as a friend, you'll understand. But the wonderful thing is that Jesus changed our status even more um, when he after Pentecost so let's look in Romans 8 and 15 and 16 for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself, itself beareth witness with our, his, our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be also glorified with him. We are... We have received the spirit of bondage whereby we cry, Abba, Father, we become children. Not just friends, but children. We belong to the family. We belong to God. He is our Father. We are his children. And that's a much more intimate relationship than just being a friend. Because children get all the goodies in the house. <laughs> and... Uh, we have this great privilege of being able to call God our Father and know that he is our Father. And if children, then heirs. And we not 